Hello my friends, I'm Lucas and you are watching Cold Demons PL. Today I'm going to build... Oops! This. It's very good kit with plastic simmerit and um, let's get to work. So if you want to check what is inside just click the link to open the box series where I show all the frames. In the larger box we have hull elements and in the smaller one parts for the turret. We will start with them. There is no complicated structure here and if someone has already built a panther before they can easily handle the assembly even without instructions. But there is one mistake Takum made. The handles on the side of the gun mounted are turned. You have to do a little surgery to change their place. Nothing difficult but a sharp knife will be necessary to get it right. It's worth finding a photo of the real vehicle where this element is visible. It's necessary to recreate the appearance of the simulate in the places of the cut off elements. Okay, a little bit of gold to add value from master model. This bar is a really great addition for a small amount of money you can enrich the model. I set it with the super glue and it looks great. Small but puts a smile on my face. The metal bar from Panzer Art with a resin muzzle brake fits perfectly with the plastic. It's worth taking a look at their website because recently there have been a lot of products added. Another addition from the long list that I have prepared for this model is a 3D print from T-Rex. Mega delicate, you have to be careful when cutting it off because it's really easy to damage the elements, especially since they are quite small. The big advantage is that they give the possibility of setting the assembly in any configuration because all parts are movable. At the end I will stick them permanently anyway. Note how long it takes to cut each part of the supports. And of course I managed to break off one element that needs to be repaired. Fortunately all you need is a piece of metal and that's it. And in the end it looks really good. And now let's make some simmerit damages. Yes, it can be done and it won't be a problem. A sharp knife and slowly cut the plastic wherever you want. A bit of glue to smooth the edges and you're done. Single traces of small arms fire are also not a complicated task. First I marked the places where they would appear with a pencil and then drilled small holes. I turned the edges with a knife so that they didn't look so perfect and wrap the same with the thin glue. It's worth taking a look at some archival photos because there you can often find inspiration for doing good looking damage. I needed a two component mask to make a few welds on the commander's turret. The way is already known from previous episodes, so there is nothing to talk about here. Of course I used my favorite sophisticated tool to make the correct shape and work for 10 minutes. I made a hit on the gun mounted, but I don't really like what I got, so I will think about what to do with it. For now it looks as you can see, including the damage to the metal cover at the top, but 
I have the mixed feelings about it. <laughs> Before the time of painting I sanded the metal bar with a sanding sponge. All this so that the primer and the paint stick better. The metal bar made the turret unstable. The solution is very simple. In the back part I added a large nut that perfectly balanced the white. A drop of super glue did the trick. This way the turret is ready. All the work with this took me one long afternoon. Gluing the hull together with the main elements was extremely easy and it was also very quick. I started gluing the main parts and generally didn't even look at the manual, it was very intuitive. I needed more focus and order when assembling the chassis so as not to confuse the order of the axles. You can use the tool attached to the model to set all the axles on one line but I managed to do it without it. Preparing the wheels is the most boring stage, cutting the plastic and sanding this amount always takes a long time. I use such a method that I just fire up some nice album on Spotify and start working. I turn off thinking and turn on mass production. It gives the best results. Because what is interesting about sanding wheels? Nothing. The idler wheels are... Hmm, well, what can I say? I just glue them together and that's it. And when it comes to the drive wheels that's a bit a different story. First of all, I use one resin wheel from the Panzer Art to have the center of the disc visible. The kit set also includes such an option, but not really because you need some modifications to make it look appropriate. Of course, to be sure, I checked if the truck would fit because it would be bad if it turned out that they weren't good on the teeth. I put the wheels on the axles and the chassis was ready. What do we have here? Paper Panzer production letters and numbers for making casting markings. They are very small. I use this set to make markings on the fun covers. I glued the elements with the thin glue and it wasn't a perfect solution. They stick poorly to the plastic. Only covering them with a primer will keep them strong. I glued the nets with super glue and then I bent them delicately. Here and there they had to be tapped again. The most important thing is to do it with a minimum amount of glue so as not to clog the eyelets and not to stain the parts. Otherwise we have to spend some time cleaning like I did here. I did the same with the oblong covers but here some damages to the mesh were also done. Now like Lego blocks, maybe more like Tamiya, 1, 2, 3 and it's ready. A little glue and the engine plate is almost done. I slightly modified the fenders by cutting them open and drilling holes for rivets. In fact, I didn't have to do it because they will be largely covered by supper bridges. I was thinking about changing the side covers to metal ones from Uber or another company, but I gave up and put in plastic. What puzzles me is that both sides are the same and the effect is that the pleat on the side is from the front and the other from the back. So for me it's a mistake, but eh, never mind. Time for trucks. As I said in Open the Box series, I'm surprised by their quality. It took me less than an hour to assemble both trucks. 
with no problems it can be done without tools just wow the only drawback is that the pins like to slide out and you need to glue them in with a small amount of glue when put on the wheels they behave exactly like metal ones During the building I did the quick test of the pin strength and they are surprisingly hard. Anyway, take a look at what it looks like. I broke a teeth on the link. Another 3D set, but this time something much smaller, the lifting hooks. Mega delicate and I'm not sure if they are too small, but I put them on the model. I will add some welds later. I also planned to use metal shackles to enrich the model. However, I compared them with plastic ones and they don't look as good as they should. The conclusion is simple. It's not always worth replacing everything with aftermarkets. Continue series with parts from T-Rex. Now the tool clamps. As I said in some previous episode, building them from photo ash is a thing of the past for me. Now it's enough to cut off the finished element and stick it in the right place. Much faster, more effective and stress-free. In the case of this set attention must be paid to the gentle removal of the supports, but with a good magnifying glass there should be no problems. The equipment of the sides of the hull are a few elements that can be inserted without too much interference in detailing. However, I decided to make a bit of madness as in the case of this block for the jack. It's a pity that I didn't do it separately. Well, you can't have it all. All in all, I could do it myself from scratch, but laziness won. The preparation of the entire handles was actually a simple matter, having ready-made elements that just needed to be glued on. Some tools haven't been plugged in because they will interfere with the assembly of holders for supper bridges. But I also added some small elements from my older models that were not used, for example the axe holder. Well, now it's time to make the supper bridges. Their construction is very simple and consists of total of three different elements. Foot bridge, handle on the hull and fastening pin. The biggest problem is finding the right places to mount the handles. You have to select these places so that on both sides of the bridge it hangs fairly evenly. In effect it reminds me some modern vehicles. It's time to slowly finish the building. One of the last elements is the metal bar from the master model to the front firing position. Two elements that perfectly enrich the model. It looks really great.
I know that maybe you are fed up with this model upgrade, but a little bit more. The fire extinguishers are a nice gadget, especially since we have several options in this set. I choose the piece to be placed on the rear of the vehicle. It will definitely look great and not as standard as it would be in the case of using an element from the set. The towing cables mustn't be different than those of Eureka XXL. There is probably not much to say about their quality because everyone who has used them knows that there are no better products in the world. A little glue to hold them in place and you're done. Finally I have gaps with green stuff to fill around the machine gun position. I also put some mass into the gaps in the front plate and that was all I had to do to complete the main construction stage. The resin jerry cans tools taken out of the handles and the spare wheel will perfectly complement the rear of the vehicle. Of course there will be probably some other details but it's already planned to the final stage. And after a week of work we have the model ready for painting. I would probably do it faster, but these few days are still a good result. My rating for this set is almost 10. I could recommend this model to everyone, it's undoubtedly worth the price and its quality is at a very high level. Of course building straight from the box will also give great results, the most important thing is to arrange the whole thing properly. At this point I would like to thank for my first patrons. If you will be interested in supporting me and gaining access to additional materials, just check my Patreon site to see what I have prepared for you. If something isn't clear, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below, because if you look at my past videos, you realize I respond to 100% of all the questions and comments in there. The only thing I ask is that if you like this video, if you learned something from it and if you enjoyed watching it, please just hit that red subscribe button and a little bell in the corner right now and that will help me to make more content just like this. And that's all for today. Cheers!